Praise the Lord. Wow, it's another wonderful moment that God has given to us in this episode of Moments of Uplifting. I want to believe today you will be uplifted. The Lord will minister to you and your life will never be the same again. Let's bow for a word of prayer as we prepare to hear the word of God. Precious Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we bless your name for this wonderful day that you have given to us, that we may listen to you, that we may rejoice in this day, that we may have hope in this day. Lord, as you speak to us, we open our hearts to you, that you may minister to us. Speak to us, we are here listening to you. In Jesus' name, we pray and we give thanks. Today, we are going to talk about a question I want to ask each one of us, to ask you, my viewer, and this is a question, are you in debt? Uko katika mandeni, mandeni nasumbua. Saingine tunakuwa kwa mandeni. And the debts are not good things. I want to create a scenario for you to imagine, to think about this scenario. Here is this woman whose husband is dead. And this husband, uh, together with her, have two sons. And then this husband died while he had debt, he had not finished paying. And this lady is here thinking about how to pay the debt. With what she had, she could not pay the debt. And the policy where she lived was not assisting at all because it was that in debt must be paid. And if the debt is not paid, then you and your children are taken up as slaves to work in the, for the, that person who you owe the debt. It was a very pathetic thing. You can enter into the mind of this woman. Already she is mourning her husband who is dead. Already the creditors are coming to pick her two sons so that they can go work for him. And I can tell you it was not easy. You may think this is a clever imagination, but this is a story, an account we read from the Bible, the word of God. And this account is written in 2 Kings chapter 4 from verse 1. And we are going to read this. And it says uh, thus, The wife of one of the sons of the prophets cried to Elijah, Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord. But the creditor has come to take my two children to be his slaves. Other versions, he say, two sons. And Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what have you in the house? And she said, Your servant has nothing in the house except a jar of oil. Imagine the effect of the debt upon the life of this woman. One, she was feeling bad that she was not able to pay because she was a godly woman. She was married to a prophet. And the prophet also died when he was in debt. Doing good people, people who are serving the Lord, are they in debt? Yes, you can be in debt while you are serving the Lord. There can be a debt you took to build the sanctuary where people can worship. There can be a debt you took to buy musical instruments. It can be a debt you took to take your children to school. It can be a debt you took to do 
Like now, people are preparing to plant, to buy fertilizer, and they're hoping that you're going to plant, and then you'll be able to pay. You could even be using an irrigation. So people are in debt for various reasons. And this woman was in debt not because she wanted it to be in debt, but she found herself in debt. So when people are in debt, what do they do? Oh my. People try all kinds of things. One of the things people try is that they go and they pick another debt to pay the one they have. When that one gets tough, they go and take another one to pay the other one. And it goes on. I know of a man working for one of the county governments, earning a very good salary, but he was in debt. There are people who are selling money everywhere. There are circles selling money. There are Shylocks selling money. And sometimes people take money they don't need. Sometimes you enter into debt, you didn't need to, but you find yourself in debt. The situation of that young man was very difficult, but by the grace of God and the wisdom that God gave us, we helped him to get out of that in debt. Well, sometimes when people are in debt, they look for all kinds of solutions. Some solutions are not godly because people may lie to solve their problem and then they have no idea how they are going to pay you after they have sweetly talked you to giving you their money. You, they don't know how they will pay and they don't care to pay. And the Bible talks about that. In fact, in Psalms 37 and the verse number 31, for those people who are ungodly, this is what the Bible says. Psalms 37 and the verse number 21. This is what the Bible tells us concerning what God thinks about it. Praise the Lord. That 7 verse 21, we read this. The wicked borrows, but does not pay back. But the righteous is generous and gives. Praise the Lord. So the wicked borrow, but they don't pay. But this woman is not wicked. So what did she do? We can learn from her what she did. Actually, the Bible says she went to the leader of her husband, who is Prophet Elisha. And when she went there, she cried to him. And she said, man of God, you know my husband, he was not a weakened man, but he died and left us with a debt. So imagine what Elisha said. He said it to her, how can I help you? The woman is coming for help. The prophet is saying, how may I help you? While she was thinking of what she could do, the man of God spoke again and asked her, what do you have? And without thinking, she said, I have nothing except a little oil. Praise the Lord. When she said she has a little oil, what did the man of God do with that little oil? We go back to 2 Kings chapter 4. We read verse 3. Then he said, go outside, borrow vessels, from all your neighbors, empty vessels, and not too few. So borrow many. Then go in and shut the door behind yourself and your sons, and they pour into all these vessels. And when one is full, set it, set it aside. So she went from him and shut the door behind herself and her sons. And as she poured, they brought the vessels to her. So they were working together with their sons. Verse 6. When the vessels were full, she said to her son, Bring me another vessel. And he said to her, There is not another. Then the oil stopped flowing. She came and told the man of God. And he said, Go, sell the oil, and pay your debts. 
and you and your sons can live on the rest. Praise be to God. We can learn from this woman. First, we see she was devastated by the dead, as you may be feeling today in devastation. Maybe you are ashamed of the debt because you are unable to pay and the people are talking about you. Maybe you are guilty that you are not able to pay. Maybe you are threatened. Your shamba is threatened for sale. Your house is threatened for sale. Your salary is threatened to be attached. And you are feeling bad about it. And the law says you must pay what you borrowed. If it is from the bank, you must pay it. If it is from a circle, you must pay it. If it's from a friend, you must pay it. Wow, wow, wow. And probably you don't have reliable family members who can help you. Maybe you are feeling like this woman. But I want to share with us a few things, a few thoughts concerning how you can deal with the debt in your life. Point number one. This woman decided to think about God. And Elijah is a man who represented God. So she went to him. So what am I saying? That we can turn to God to give us solutions when we do not know what to do. Sometimes we come to the end of ourselves. We have taken from the Shylock and it is multiplying very fast and you don't know what to do. I am recommending turn to God. So when you turn to God, what do you do? Be humble, be sincere, be truthful. Probably you dug the pit of debt by your own lust, by your own pleasures. Be truthful to God. If there are things you need to repent, please do repent. And when you come to God, tell him the way it is. Here I am, my father. I am unable to sort myself out. And I need your help. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 7 and verse number 7, Call unto me, and I will answer. Uh, no, uh, it says, Ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door shall be opened. So you go to God in the sincerity of heart. Oh my. When we are in trouble, we must run to God. It is very bad not to pay. It is very bad not to mind about not paying. God is saying it is wickedness not to pay. And you are unable to pay. So what do you do? Go to God seriously in prayer. When we set our hearts to seek God, because he is a father, he will hear us and he will respond to us. This is what he says in Psalms 123, verse 1 and 2. You can hang on it. It is the word of God and the word of God has power. And it is saying this. To you, I lift up my eyes. O you who are enthroned in the heavens, behold, as the eyes of servants look to the hand of their master, as the eyes of a maid servant to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God till he has mercy on us. Call upon God and he shall have mercy on you. Go to God seriously in prayer and tell him, Father, I am in this pit. Come and deliver me. God hears prayers. There was a time that uh, some people owed me money. And I didn't know what to do because I needed the money. When I tell them, give me my money, they are not giving. I actually decided also to go and pray that God will touch them and provide for them so that they can pay me. Praise be to the Lord. So even that person who has owned money, they can also engage in prayer, asking God to open doors for those who owe you money. 
and then God will also hear you. It is because you are moved by love. I want to say this statement. You have God in the measure which you desire him. You have God in the measure in which you desire him. You want to hear God. You want a solution from God. Then you must seriously seek God. Not just thinking about it as you are eating food. You need to take some time off. Have a retreat with God so that he can sort you, he can, uh, sort you out. Point number two. When we are seeking God, we turn to the promises of God. We turn to the word of God. There is something that the word of God has taught me. And I love this verse. And it is in the first, second Peter chapter 1 from verse number 3. Are you in debt? Please listen to me. There is a solution for you. Verse 3 says, 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 3, His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and in godliness. Through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence, by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises, so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful nature. What am I saying? that God has given us promises of how to get out of trouble. And it is good to turn to the word of God and ask in the situation that I am in, what word is he speaking to my situation? When you start seeking the word of God, God will speak to you through his word. He will give you some wisdom on how to respond. You will be able to calm your mind as far as that in death is concerned. And then because you want to be godly, you do not want to be like the people of the world or the wicked. You want to be holy even though you are in debt. It is very important the attitude that you have concerning this in debt. So he is saying, when you turn to God, when you seek him, God will give you wisdom from his word. A verse like, God is the owner of all silver and gold, a thousand cattle in a thousand hills. You can even be humorous with God and tell him, Father, I only need to pay 10,000 Kenya shillings and they are giving me nightmares. Why don't you sell one of your goats or one of your cows and you give to me and I pay? Our God is a father. Run to his bosom and he will sort you out. How will he sort you out? Number three, God will give you an idea. An idea of what you are going to do. Ecclesiastes 9, Ecclesiastes 9 verse number 10. I am not talking about economics. I am not talking about the, the wisdom of how you deal with money according to the world. I am talking about the wisdom in the word of God. The word of God says in Ecclesiastes 9.10, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. So as you call upon God, I am sure he is a good father, and he is going to tell you what to do. Hallelujah. In the Psalms 128 verse number 2, there is a counsel we are given there. Once God has given you an idea, it is good to turn to this counsel. 128 Psalms and the verse number 2. We can read from verse 1. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways, you shall eat the fruit of the labor of your hands. You shall be blessed, and it shall be well with you. 
So when God gives you an idea, work very hard at it. This woman was given an idea by the prophet. What was the idea? Go and borrow all the empty jars from your neighbors. Hallelujah. Maybe some people may have looked at her and they said, this woman is so depressed. Where is she going to take the empty uh, jars? Well, she didn't mind what the people said. Maybe they were saying now she is a mental case. But she continued to borrow. And she borrowed many. Then the man of God and he said, when you borrow, go inside your house and they shut the door. And they shut your, your sons inside. I can imagine now they were working. Here is a little jar of oil. And here is many jars that they have borrowed from their neighbors. And this woman walked by faith. She would take that little oil and tell one of her sons, hold this, this other jar, jar. And she would pour the oil in. And the oil would continue to flow. When it is full, she tells the son, put it there. Bring another one. And the other son would bring another, another jar. And they would put the oil. And it continues to flow. Do you know what? The oil continued to flow until all the jars they had borrowed were filled with oil. And then she didn't know now what to do. She went back and she asked the man of God, what do I do now? So go sell the oil and then pay the debt. You know, some people, God opens opportunities for them. Instead of giving priority to the people they owe money, that is the time they started doing other things. That is wickedness. And may God cause you to desist from such actions. When God blesses you, go and pay the creditors first, and then what is left, solve your problems. So the man of God and he told her, borrow many empty uh, jars. Praise the Lord. What does that mean? She worked very hard to borrow. Maybe she got tired of borrowing. But the oil would have continued to flow in every jar that she had borrowed. Sometimes God may bring an idea. And the devil tells you it's not going to work. And you can abandon a godly idea and embrace a worldly idea. What God guides you to do, do it in faith. Praise the Lord. And you will be able to solve your problems. Some people magnify their problems by telling everybody in the village, I have this issue, can you give me the 1,000? I have this issue, can you give me 10? I have this issue, can you give me that? Calm down. First, go to God. Let God give you an idea. And then settle down. Have faith and work at it hard. And the Lord God will bless you. Praise be to the Lord. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 10 to 12, says this. There is the wisdom which we have. You know, the spirit in us thinks in the way, you know, in a certain way, but the Spirit of God who is put in us by God will download the mind of God to us. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ for anybody who is crying because they have a debt, turn to God tonight. Have a conversation with God and may God lead you to do what he wants you to do. Hallelujah. Point number four of dealing with the debts. It's like I've already said, seek for godly counsel. There are men of God, women of God, who can pray with you. And they can, when I say, kukushika mkono, na kukusaidia katika maombi, na mungu atakusaidia. Hallelujah. Now, niseme hivi. This debt is only temporal. But there is a worse debt, which we all have. And we can use this story to talk about this debt. What is this debt? This southern debt is the debt which we all have in God. In Genesis chapter number two, 
from 16 to 17. Adam and Eve were told, uh, Adam was told, this tree in the center of the encounter, do not eat fruit from it. And the minute you eat, you will surely die. Oh my God. That's what he was told. And they ate the fruit and they died. And we are born after the image of the Adamic nature. So we all have a debt of sin in us. And the sin, the debt of sin must be paid. Romans chapter 6 verse 23 says, The wages of sin is death. It must be paid. But the free gift of God in Christ Jesus is eternal life. So just like Elijah came and intervened in between the woman and the creditor, Jesus Christ is here to intervene between our punishment, which God is keeping for all sinners, and Jesus Christ who died for us and can negotiate for us. He paid our debt through his blood. So I am talking to us viewers. This death of the world, there is a time when they are of no effect because the system of this world will pass away and we will be ushered into another system where now what will be important is what you have done with the debt of sin. And this is the spiritual debt which we owe to God if our sins are not forgiven. He says, watch Ile Sasa slavery for a short time, six years, until the year of Jubilee, as is recorded in Exodus chapter 21 and verse number 2. This will be eternal in hell, but God is offering us a solution. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, by the help of God, you can go to Jesus Christ. The way this woman went to Elijah, Elisha, and her problem was sorted out. May you invite the Lord Jesus Christ to your life. He is so good, actually. In John chapter 10, verse 10, he said, I am the good shepherd. I have come that I may give you life, and I'll give you life in abundance. So in Christ Jesus, who is the owner of the world, who has the title deed for the heavens and the earth, he is able to sort you out. So don't engage the ways of the world in doing away with your debt. Turn to God. He will give you ideas. If he tells you the bank, go there. If he tells you do this, do it. And the Lord God will bless you and you shall have peace. That is sin which is heavy, which is making you not sleep, which is making you cry, which is making you mkosanen and jamiyako. Bring it to God. Bring it to Jesus and tell Jesus, I am tired of carrying this load in my heart, of load it from me. Forgive me. And Jesus is able to forgive you. Today, if you can turn to Jesus, you shall have good sleep because he will deal with your heart and the burden of sin will be lifted from your heart and you shall have joy you shall have good life and you shall have peace. Let us pray. Everlasting Father, as I share this message today, I know there is somebody crying because they don't know what to do. Physically, they owe debts. Spiritually, they owe debts. There is a load in their hearts. I pray the oil of the Holy Spirit to flow in both cases. In the physical case, to give solution to this physical death, and in the spiritual case, to flow and then deliver all those sin-sick souls which are abandoned by sin. Let somebody today put their faith in you. It is a, a, a solution that we have been given in Christ Jesus. Like Elisha gave to the woman, I pray somebody will turn to you today and you shall offload their debt by telling them how to live well and how to keep away the dead of sin. Father, in Jesus' name, help somebody today. Let somebody turn to you. Let the Holy Spirit minister to them. 
Let their lives be realigned by you. Let them embrace the love meted out by you to the glory and honor of your name. In Jesus' name, we pray and we give thanks. Amen and amen. God bless you and keep you strong.